Once upon a time, there lived a king named Ahasuerus. In his third year of being king, he threw a big feast with all his princes and servants that lasted 180 days. After the big feast, there was a party for all the people in Shushan, great and small, that lasted seven days. And the palace was decorated with marble, white, green, and blue hangings with cords of purple linen and silver rings. And everyone drank wine in royal cups. And Queen Vashti made a separate feast for the women. And on the seventh day, when the king and his guests were celebrating, his guests were demanding to see Queen Vashti, for they heard she was very beautiful. So the king ordered his seven chamberlains to bring the Queen Vashti before the king. But not everything went as planned. Your Majesty, the king is requesting you at his banquet. Can't you see I'm having a party here? Why would I go to be with a bunch of controlling men? I am Queen Vashti. Now take you and your men quietly out of my presence. Can't you see you were interrupting my company? The king's expecting you immediately. Maybe you don't understand me. My final answer is no. How dare they come and disturb me? How rude is that? Sorry for the wait, my king. The queen said she is not coming. What shall we do unto the Queen Vashti according to the law, because she had not performed the commandment of King Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? Vashti the Queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes, and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the King Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of our country do the same which is out of hand. If it please the king, let's make this law permanent, Vashti comes no more. Another better than she shall have her estate. The kingdom of Shushan has no more queen. Because of Queen Vashti's disobedience, she shall come before the king no more. Go and remove Vashti. She is no longer a queen. And any woman coming spreading this independent wicked mindset will not be tolerated in all my provinces. Who does she think she is? I will find me another mate, humble and virtuous woman of God. Vashti, you must come with us now. King Ahasuerus no. commands. I am not going anywhere. This is my kingdom, I am the queen. This would ensure that all the wives in the land would never disobey their husbands, in fear of being banished and put away like Vashti was for her disobedience. The king made a decree that was sent all over the land that the wives should honor their husbands, both great and small. The king remembered what Vashti did in her disobedience and ordered that only young, fair virgins be sought for the king's new queen. A command to the king's officers went out to bring all the fair young virgins to Shushan Palace under the custody of the king. And there was a Jew named Mordecai that lived in Shushan, a Benjamite. He had escaped captivity from Jerusalem. He raised Esther, Hadassah that is, his uncle's daughter, because she was an orphan. She was very young and beautiful. Her parents died and Mordecai raised her as his own daughter. And Mordecai made Esther promise never to tell that she was a Jew if she was ever taken to the palace. When the king put out the decree, all the young maidens were gathered together to Shushan Palace. 
By order of the king Ahasuerus, we must take all of the fairest young virgins and take them to the Shushan Palace. Grab them. Esther was brought to the king's house too, into the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. You must come with me, madam. Esther pleased Haggai. He really liked her and showed her kindness. He quickly gave her seven maidens to help her and all her purification items. He liked Esther and her maidens were given the best place of the house of the women. And Esther remembered the words of her cousin Mordecai and she did hide the fact that she was a Jew and that her real name was Hadassah. Every day Mordecai walked in front of the women's house to check on Esther to see how she did. For 12 months the women went through a purification program, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors, being taught and purified to be the queen. Every woman who came before the king was given great gifts whatever treasure she wanted to take from the king's house. But when it was Esther's turn to go in to the king, she didn't want any treasures or gifts. She only took what Haggai gave to her, and everyone saw that she looked absolutely beautiful. Esther was taken on to the king, Ahasuerus, into his house. The king loved Esther above all the other women, she had grace and favor in his sight. He set a royal crown upon her head and made her the new queen. There was a big feast and party to celebrate her becoming the queen of Shushan. Mordecai came to the king's gate to check on Esther and make sure she did not tell the people she was a Jew. Esther obeyed her cousin's command. One day when Mordecai was at the gate, he heard the king's two chamberlains, Bython and Teresh, who plotted to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Mordecai told Esther, and she certified the king in Mordecai's name. Esther, I was sitting by the gates and overheard two of the king's chamberlains saying that they want to lay hands on the king. Go quickly. You need to tell the king before they have time to do harm to him. Oh, my dear king. I was told by Mordecai that your two chamberlains have made a plot to lay hands on you. He heard their words himself. Please do something about this, so they can do nothing to harm you. Esther, are you serious? Guards come quick. We have an urgent matter to handle. Yes, sir. There are two chamberlains abiding by the palace gate, plotting to harm your king. Take care of them both. Yes, my king. He will never knew what hit him. Oh, no. There was an Agagite man named Haman, and the king promoted Haman above all the princes of the palace. The king commanded that all respect Haman and bow to him, but Mordecai refused to bow before Haman. Bow to me at once. Do you know who I am? I'm warning you, peasant. No one disrespects Haman. Mordecai did not bow before Haman when he came, which made Haman very angry. Haman wanted to lay hands on Mordecai. Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews, including Mordecai. 
Haman went to the king and made a claim against the Jews. My king, they don't keep your laws. These Jews are scattered throughout your kingdom. Why should they deserve to stay if they don't even respect the laws of the king? If it pleases the king, let it be written this day that all the Jews are to be destroyed. The and king killed. took off his ring and gave it to Haman. The silver and the people are given to you. Do what you feel is best. And a decree was made and sealed with the king's ring that all Jews be destroyed and killed, both young, old, little children, and women, in one day, and to take all of their possessions. The people of Shushan were confused by the decree. When Mordecai heard this, he <laughs> tore his clothes and put on his sackcloth and ashes and cried. All the Jews were sad and devastated. They prayed, fasted, and cried unto their God. Esther's maids told her about the decree. She was worried and sad. She sent clothes to Mordecai so he could take off his sackcloth, but he refused. <laughs> Esther sent the chamberlain, Hattach, to speak to Mordecai. He went and told Mordecai Esther's words. Mordecai told him to tell her of the decree and the money he promised to pay those who killed and destroyed the Jews. He gave Hattach a copy of the decree. Say to him, everyone knows that, whoever, no matter who, comes to the king without being called, that person can be put to death, unless the king holds out his golden scepter and spares their life. The king has not called me for thirty days. He told Mordecai. Tell Esther, think not about yourself, that you will be safe from this decree, comfortable in the palace, if you don't speak up. The Most High will deliver us from another place, but you and your father's house will be destroyed. What if the Most High put you in the palace for such a time as this? Tell my cousin Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Shushan Palace, and please tell them to fast for me for three days. My maidens and I will fast as well. Then I will finally go unto the king. And if I die, well, then I die. Mordecai told all the Jews as Esther said. On the third night, Esther put on her royal clothes and with her bravery approached the king in his court. The king had mercy and held out his golden scepter. Esther walked to him and touched the top of the scepter. She was saved. What do you need, my queen? And what is your request? I will give you any request, even half of my kingdom. My king, I am requesting that you and Haman join me for a feast I have prepared. And Haman and the king came to Esther's feast. Esther, my queen, what is your request? You shall have it, even if it's up to half of my kingdom. My king, if I have found favor in your sight, Please fulfill my request and you and Haman join me for yet another feast tomorrow. And when you come to the dinner tomorrow, I will give you my request. Haman walked away happy and joyful. When he saw Mordecai at the gate, he looked very angry at him because Mordecai did not stand up for him or even acknowledge him. But Haman held his anger inside. Haman went home to his wife, Zeresh, and his friends to brag of his riches, lots of children, and how the king had promoted him over all the princes and servants of the kingdom. The queen let no man come to the banquet but me. But none of this means anything as long as Mordecai the Jew is still sitting at the king's gate. Let gallows be made fifty cubits high and tomorrow tell the king to hang Mordecai on it and then enjoy the feast. Haman agreed with his wife Zeresh and had the gallows made. That night, the king could not sleep, so he commanded the Book of Chronicles to be read before him. 
the king found written that Mordecai told that Bithon and Teresh sought to lay hands on him. The king decided to honor Mordecai for his wonderful deeds. Haman was walking to the king's court to tell the king about his plans to hang Mordecai on the gallows. The king called for Haman to come in. What should be done for a man who the king wants to honor? Haman smiled because he thought the king was talking about him. Let royal clothes that the king wears and a horse that the king's rides be given to him, and a royal crown be put upon his head. Let one of the king's most noble princes give it to him and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim him honored before all the people. That's a great idea. Do all that you have suggested for Mordecai, the Jew. Then Haman took the royal apparel, horse and crown for Mordecai and brought him through the city on horseback. Haman was so upset that he covered his head and went home. Then it was time for Queen Esther's second banquet of wine. The king and Haman were present. My queen, what is your request? Tell me my love, and it shall be granted even if it is half of the kingdom. My king, if I have found favor in your sight, please fulfill my request and the request of my people. We are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to perish. I had held my tongue. But an enemy has done much damage. Who is this man? And where is he at? My king, the adversary and enemy is none other than the wicked man Haman. The king stood up from the banquet of wine, and in his anger, he went into the palace garden. Then Haman stood up and begged Esther to spare his life because he saw the king's anger against him. The king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet. And you disrespect my wife in my own house. After the king was done speaking, his men came immediately and covered Haman's face. Then one of his men said, There is a tower made for hanging people at Haman's house, 13 times taller than a man. And Haman had it made to hang Mordecai the Jew, who spoke good, and help the king. Hang Haman on it where everyone can see. The king's men took Haman away, and the king's anger lessened. And on that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, onto Esther the queen. Esther finally told the king who Mordecai was to her, her beloved cousin. And the king took off his ring, which he took from Haman, and gave it onto Mordecai. Esther fell to the king's feet with tears and made a humble petition. The king held out the golden scepter towards Esther, so she stood before the king. The king agreed and had all the scribes write to all the provinces that the king granted the Jews in all the cities to take back what was theirs and to be able to protect themselves from anyone who sought to harm them. Upon one day in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, Mordecai was given blue and white royal clothes and a crown. All the Jews were so happy. They had joy and gladness and a feast and a good day. And many people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. The enemy of the Jews hoped to have power over them, but instead the Jews had rule over their enemies by the hand of their God that day. The days of the Jews protecting themselves would be called Purim, after the name Pur. 
from that time on, the Jews would keep these two days every year to remember when they were saved from the hands of their enemy. They should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, and in every city. The days of Purim would be a remembrance of the Jews resting from their enemies, and that this month would be turned from sorrow to joy, and all should feast and have joy, sending portions to one another and giving gifts to the poor. And Mordecai the Jew became next to the king and great among all Jews and all people of Shushan. The End